Hey Fabricators, and welcome back to another episode of Advancing Fabric, brought to you by Advancing Analytics, your data analytics and AI experts. I'm joined once again by my co-fabricator, Johnny. Hey Fabricators. How are you doing, Johnny? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, good. Excited. We have another news drop uh, that's happened this month, so lots of things for us to get through. Um, I've picked out a couple of things that I'm most excited about, um, and I think we'll run through them. How about you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another good uh, month of news. Um, it's almost, it was quite quite small this month compared to sort of the last bump packed few, um, but yeah, definitely still uh, a few highlights worth picking out. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit thankful for the breather. There's, it's a lot to keep up on top of, to be honest. <laughs> Some good, small, incremental improvements uh, this month, I reckon, though. Yeah. Shall we dive in? Let's do it. Great. So, this month's news uh, dropped, and we've got a couple of the kind of headline points here as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, hate to mention it again, but myself and Craig were lucky enough to go to Las Vegas uh, back in March for the uh, very first fabric community conference and the great news for all of our european viewers out there is they are now going to do a european event so the european fabric community conference or hashtag fabcom uh for those that like to uh, follow the old uh, hashtags there uh, that's taking place in stockholm at the end of september uh we'll make sure we stick a link in the description down below uh just so you can follow that to uh, find out how to get hold of tickets for it and uh, yeah get involved yeah yeah a little bit closer to home at least eh? Yeah, I mean, trip to Stockholm would be nice. So, yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I'll uh, might put the business request in. <laughs> yeah, and we've got a reminder as well. Get certified on Fabric. So there's the uh, Fabric um, certification that you can take with the exam for DP600. Um, so you've got that, don't you, Johnny? I've got DP600, yeah. Have you not got it, Craig? Not yet. No, not quite found the time. Maybe this is my incentive to get out there and get it done absolutely get get it smashed okay so let's dig into the news um i think you had a couple to begin with didn't you yeah so as always with the news updates uh, we always get the uh, the power bi updates uh, up front which is uh, obviously one of my favorite topics uh, first one i wanted to bring a bit of attention to uh, we recently had the brand new visual calculations feature uh, released just a few months back this idea for you to be able to put uh, context relevant DACT expressions into specific visuals in a report uh, and there's just a little bit of news uh, coming um, with that feature now that uh, they've extended it to some uh, extra visuals so um, extra visuals now support the visual calculations which, which is great uh, and also they've uh, added a little bit more uh, context I've probably said the word context too many times but uh, yeah basically there's a in the in the little pane that um, helps you author your um, your visual calculations uh, it's just a little bit more obvious now where that calculation is taking place so yeah that's my first one uh my next one is another power bi update um so uh, if you scroll right down the bottom paginated reports so like i am uh, i love ssrs back in the day SQL server reporting services i have a soft spot for paginated reports and we yeah, have we got the fantastic news the fantastic news oh yeah look at this Paginate reports now support folders. So when you are publishing your paginated reports using Report Builder, uh, you can publish them directly into folders. We know how much everybody loves the folders. Uh, so, yeah. yeah more honestly, new. I, I think it's just you that's that's mostly excited about this. Maybe you need to start like a, a regular hashtag update or like a newsletter, Fabric Folders. Fabric Folders Monthly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fabric folders February? I don't know. <laughs> Might work. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. You've got the ability to kind of traverse them now, at least. Um, it's quite helpful. Um, one thing that jumped out for me is right there on the screen, master data uh, in public preview. I was like, what? Uh, no, but... Groundbreaking, doesn't it? 
Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit underwhelming, but still an interesting update anyway. Um, short kind of paragraph here, just about those kind of endorsements um, and the tagging that you can do with your data. So you, we've had the certified and promoted already, and it's just this new capability to add uh, that master data kind of tagging uh, to your data. Yeah, so, I mean, for me, with, with for me with that, the promotion and certification made sense from a kind of like semantic model and reporting perspective when it's kind of the the end product. I guess having a tag that it probably uh, is more pertinent to more upstream artifacts in terms of things like your lake house storage and things like that uh, does make sense. I think I was a bit like you. I saw the heading and maybe got a bit excited for what it might be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. So. Not much to update there, um, but interesting nonetheless. What else have we got in here? So, uh, new feature as part of Synapse Data Warehousing, uh, the query activity view. So, this lets you um, monitor uh, running and completed SQL queries. So, Craig, I'm going to tell you one of my favorite jokes because I know how much you, you love a good joke. Uh, <laughs> this is courtesy of one of my old bosses. Um, and hopefully, if there's any DBAs watching, you'll, you'll, you're going to laugh hard at this um, okay, not knock who's there sp underscore sp underscore who speed one speed two speed three <laughs> anyway for those for those watching who that made absolutely zero sense to uh back in sort of sql server days if you wanted to uh monitor queries running against yeah, your tables there is a kind of uh, built-in stored procedure sp underscore who that would show you um, who was running what, you know, what queries are they running, how long they were taking, all those kind of things. And it also gave you the ability to um, to kill uh, to kill a session. So if you saw a query that was basically maybe taking up a load of memory, um, you know, uh, burning a load of resource and, and, and locking tables or whatever, you could kill it there and then. And this kind of uh, this query came up, and I just kind of like got sort of like warm fuzzy memories of my days. Yeah monitoring data warehouses and using SP who uh, <laughs> to, if you say that quick enough, it sounds like something else when I said that quick then. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that being able to sort of uh, just monitor. So, you know, if, if you're using your um, capacity metrics app and you can see some spikes uh, in your usage, um, then potentially this gives you the, the opportunity to go in, have a look at query histories, see if there's particularly uh, particular queries that are using up those resources. It maybe gives you an opportunity to help uh, optimize some of those things. Or if you do want to be nasty, it does have the opportunity to uh, kill sessions and boot people off. Um, so yeah, let's throw throwback for all the DBAs out there. Nice. So yeah, that's quite helpful from just the visibility of what's going on, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. I think observability of any platform is a really important thing, and it's nice to see these sort of features getting introduced. Yeah. So next one for me uh, is the Spark Connector for Fabric Data Warehouse. Uh, so digging into this one, um, there's not much information here, so a couple of paragraphs, but it kind of links you out to the documentation, kind of talks about it in more detail. Um, I think this is a bit of a big one because there's been a little bit of a um, there's a little bit of a separation in the background between that kind of lake house and your warehouse approach, um, and where you've not really had the capability to cross the streams as such in Fabric. So you can't really work with your warehouse from your kind of your Spark from notebooks and things like that, and then also you've got that. A limited capability of just reading from your lake house uh, using the SQL endpoint. So they've been, they've had that separation, even though we've got Delta files under the hood, under both of them, we've had that kind of separation between the two, which kind of aligns quite closely to different personas. So you're going to have like more of your data engineer working in Spark, working uh, with Python or Scala or something. And then you're going to have more of like a analytics engineer or data analyst or um, kind of BI developer and things like that, that's going to be working in SQL with your warehouses. So this looks like it's starting to kind of bridge that gap. We're still talking about reading that data, but you're able to then, from your notebooks, read the data from the warehouse and uh, 
actually do something with it, like drop it into a table in a lake house, uh, for example. There is a few caveats so far. Uh, it looks like it's currently in preview, although that's not mentioned in that news article. If you dig into the documentation, it is still in preview at the moment. Um, and it only supports Scala just now, which is makes me a little bit sad. Like I am. Um, Everyone, is, that, is Scala not everybody's first choice for working with notebooks, no? no. Um, I'll leave that for comments uh, under the video, but yeah, Python's definitely the way forward for me. Hey, it's damn blow if you use Scala and notebooks <laughs> and know who you are. Yeah, and if nobody replies, then there you go, that's your audience. There's, there's, there's no one here that's writing in Scala. Um, so interesting development, uh, certainly something that looks like they'll be starting to kind of cross uh, both of those experiences a bit more, which kind of takes me into the next one that I wanted to highlight um, right down the bottom of the documentation or this month's update is moving data across workspaces via data pipings uh, with modern Git data experience. So that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, so you can do this just straight from a, a copy data, but they've got that in the kind of get data wizard. I know we're probably avoiding using nerd wizard, so the get data experience. Um, and it allows you to connect to a lake house and uh, also for your source of data and then connect to a lake house, a warehouse and another work. So you're copying from a lake house or warehouse and moving it to a lake house or warehouse. And you can cross the streams there to kind of use the same analogy where you can copy from a lake house to a warehouse, which is an interesting development and kind of gives you that kind of capability to move data from that one skill set, that one persona over to the other skill set. But I can't feel, I, I can't help but feel that this is bringing us back to a contradiction of that one copy within one lake. Like we should be encouraging teams and domains and users to shortcut their data to other teams and share the data in that way so that we've got one copy of it so that if there's changes to it, there's updates, we're not having to worry about those data silos starting to uh, crop up. So this is that copy data capability. So we're not doing transformations on it. We're just making a copy of the data. And it, it's not sitting very well with me, but if that's if you've got use cases for them, Drop a comment uh, below. I'd be really interested to hear what your use cases would be. Um, but for me, I'm just I'm not really seeing much benefit. It feels like a little bit of an anti-pattern. What about you, Johnny? Yeah, I, I mean, and I agree. Like, part of me always feels like giving people the choice and flexibility, and so the fact that the capability is there, that you've got the option to do it, is kind of liberating. Uh, as you say, potentially it might influence or um, promote some anti-patterns. Um, so it's kind of used with caution, used for the right reasons. Um, I think you briefly mentioned there as well, the fact that you can now as part of the pipelines also create a warehouse as a new destination, which uh, sort of almost falls into the same category. I saw this at first and thought, oh, that's a nice sort of little quality of life improvement. You don't have to bounce out to a different screen to create your warehouse and get that set up. You can just as you write to a table using a, a copy activity uh, in a pipeline, you can just create it on the fly. Um, but I mean, I've had pain with that in the past because, um, you know, yeah. warehouses in particular, you can manage using um, SQL projects so that you can source control them and basically not using a SQL project for that creation of new tables and just letting it kind of being done on the fly via a pipeline. You're going to potentially get out of kilter between your, you know, your, um, yeah your source control and, and your your code base yeah um, so yeah a adf used to do this you could just create a table on the fly um and we had used to have all sorts of issues with azure sql databases and using uh sql projects and um, visual studio and them getting out of whack because people were creating uh stuff on the fly so again yeah, you, you know yeah. You're yeah. kind of going against development practices a little bit there. Um, I mean, a lot of that's going to depend on the maturity of your organization. Like, are you are you kind of using these in a small team or do you have kind of well-established development practices, um, proper kind of source control, uh, CI, CD, that sort of things um, that this starts to kind of potentially cause problems with? But it's, it's going to be down to how you work with it, isn't it? So working practices I'm gonna go with my favorite my favorite soundbite my favorite microsoft soundbite that um 
fle uh, displaying the core flexibility at the edges. Like if you're spinning up a quick proof of concept, if you're just trying to test something out and see whether or not it might work before you go down a, a fully, you know, managed and robust development life cycle, then actually maybe it is quite a nice little improvement. But, you know, if mm. you start sticking this into your kind of production environments, I'd be, I'd be a little bit less keen. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, that's us at the bottom of the the news. Was there anything else you wanted to call out, or quite light nothing, on detail here with this one? Yeah, nothing specific from this month. So uh, keep an eye out because or it's, it's really great because they uh, Microsoft dropped these uh, these monthly updates, and we try and jump on them as quick as we can and do a bit of a, uh, a bit of a review, a bit of a roundup. Um, mm -hmm. But Fabric World is moving so quickly. So I know that there's, there's features that haven't gone into the June news update. And at time of filming, we're still in June. Um, there's a couple of the new bits and bobs that have dropped. So hopefully they'll get rolled up into next month's um, July news. Uh, and might potentially try and uh, stick out some um, some videos about those in between times as well. So keep your eye out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if there's anything we haven't covered or there's any features in this month's news, uh, that you're excited about, um, then drop us a comment. Uh, let's talk about it. Um, anything that we've potentially missed, or if there's anything you want us to cover uh, in more detail and dig into. There's a lot of these kind of features we're quite excited about digging into and um, playing about with in the details. I haven't even went into look, exploring the capabilities uh, now that we've got Delta 3.0 or 3.1 uh, within our spark runtime as well so that's exciting as well so yeah so, well as always if you're still here thanks for watching um don't forget of course uh if you want to keep up with more fabric news from uh, the team here at advancing analytics make sure you do like and subscribe and uh, we'll catch you next time see you later see ya <laughs>